Good morning, traders and investors. My name is Roger Scott, and I'm the senior strategist for Wealth Press. It's Thursday. It's uh, June 16th. It's about 8.06 in the morning. The market's going to open up in about an hour and 24-ish minutes. And before the opening bell, we're down quite a bit, right near the lows, maybe just a tad below or right near the lows. NASDAQ's down 300 points. The Dow's down 585 points. Here's a couple of interesting part things I need you guys to pay attention to, and this will be very, very interesting. If you look at the QQQ right here, looks like we're going to open up just a hair above the, the swing low. If we start rallying from this point on, then I will be much more... Um, I'll be much more convinced that this is in fact a shakeout because what happens during shakeouts, markets open up near the bottom and they start going up. They start going up. And most importantly, volatility doesn't penetrate high. So keep your eye on a couple of things today. Whether we break the lows, that's going to be number one, really break the lows. I mean, if we just kind of sit around these levels right here, I mean, like break the lows, go down like this, like a breakdown. If we break down, that's not good. But if we start moving up from here, and if volatility does not, does not, I repeat, does not take out this high right here, that's going to be another confirmation that we're bottoming out. Let me show you. This is the, this is the consumer discretionary sector. This is the sector that's been weakest, still is weakest, and the one that I believe will be turning around. If you look at the opening or where it's supposed to open, it's 137. 137 is right around this level, so it's still higher than the previous low. So the biggest factor that I'm looking at technically, and it's really important, is whether or not we're going to break the lows on the sectors that have been leading, uh, lagging the most. And right now, on a, on a morning session, I don't know what's going to happen after the market opens, but right now, if you look at the price action on the QQQ, and if you look at the price section on the XLY, those are the two of the weakest sectors, and the ones that are most impacted by interest rates, they are so far not breaking below. 31.3707 is like right here. So a low, the low here is 136. So as long as we stay above 136, we would be okay. So I want to see if there's going to be a sharp turnaround. And again, I'm very, very, very hesitant to say that the market's going to go down quite a bit because this is the NASDAQ 100 and this is the number of stocks below the 200 day moving average. And again, this is what I was saying yesterday. We're almost there. We're like quite there. This is 2008. COVID, we couldn't reach these levels, not even close. Last time we raised rates, we couldn't reach these levels. This is telling us that about eight stocks out of 100 are trading above the 200 day moving average. So we're not that far away from the bottom, especially when you consider 2008. And when you look on the S&P, and again, my job here is not to tell you the absolute low, but my job here is to figure out if the market's going to crash, burn, or if it's just going to kind of gyrate. And again, from where I'm sitting, it looks like we're near the bottom. See that? Again, is this going to be the absolute bottom or is this going to be the absolute bottom? It's hard to say, but this is 2008. This is 2010, 11-ish. This is COVID, and this is where we're at right now. So Yes, we could theoretically go down another a little bit more, but my point is, and again, this is the point I'm making, we're not up here, we're down here. So this is not a time to throw the baby out with the bathwater, especially after the reaction we saw yesterday. Now, yesterday we had the Fed announce, um, announce they're gonna rate interest rates by three quarters of a point. The biggest factor that they alluded to, and I wanna show you this, and this is why the market rallied afterwards, let me just show you this, is that the market went up yesterday after the report, which gave us a very, very strong clue that this downside action priced in the 8.6% CPI, which was what caused the market to go down, and the market was gonna rally because most of it was priced in. But again, we're opening near the low today, and I mean, that was near the closing belt, and there hasn't been that much action overnight, as I'll get into in a minute. So if we start going up from these levels, that's a very, very positive sign. So I'm not really concerned about opening lower. I'm concerned about where we're going to close. The closing is what I'm focused on. Also, pay attention to the bond market because it does look like we fell off. But again, it looks like we're really oversold. So the bond market may in fact be pricing in and we may be going back into our range. <clears throat> Excuse me. If we do go back into our range, that'll be signify that we're bottoming out. But again, 
when you're considering panic, selling in your, your, your blue chip stocks, consider where we're at right now. I mean, momentum levels are really near the bottom of the barrel and risk right now is not the same as it was in 2008. So I don't think we're gonna go much lower. I mean, this is COVID, worse environment than right now. So again, we may go a little bit here, we may go a little bit here, but the bottom line is, I think we're near the end of this. And again, pay attention to housing starts and permits. They're coming out in about 20 minutes and jobless claims. Jobless claims have been edging a little bit higher, but they're still fairly stable. They're still near historic lows. So if any, if we're near the four week moving average, 220, which is exactly what I was about to say, we're okay. Even if we go to 230, we're okay. I'm not really focused on it too much because it's been very, very stable. Housing starts and permits. Let me show you some numbers that we're looking at right now. About 1,695,000. 1, Again, the number is not expected to drop too much. Here is where we have a lot of unforeseeability, the manufacturing index. And I think that's going to be the biggest uh, hurdle. Um, obviously, I'd like to see the number, the number to, to go higher, but if the sentiment is weaker, that could change us up. But again, you could see here, we're looking at five to 17. So they have no idea what's gonna be going on. And remember, they survey businesses to see what the index is in terms of shipment orders and, and so forth. And if the number's stronger, prior was 2.6, it was awful. I'm hoping that the number will pick up and it'll give us signs that manufacturing is in fact picking up. Again, the fact that the market rallied yesterday uh, after the Fed went three quarters of a point was a positive sign. So again, my biggest factor is not what's gonna, where the market's gonna open. I wanna see where the market is going to close. Now, global shares were mostly lower Thursday after Federal Reserve raised its key interest rate by three quarter of a point and signaled more rate hikes. The markets, uh, before this report, the market was pricing in 3.10 between now and the end of the year. So we're now 75.75 into that. Shares in New York's rallied after Fed hikes, the biggest since 1994, as investors took heart from Jerome, Mr. I'm gonna predict the future. Oh, wait till I don't. Comments suggested future rate increases may be more modest. That would be great. The Bank of England is raising rates, I think a quarter of a point. Uh, economists said the increase was already expected and factored in. It's not a big increase, but it's showing us that other world economies are also increasing rates. The Bank of Japan started a two-day policy meeting. The Japan Central Bank is under pressure to act given downwards pressure on the yen. They want to raise rates. They want to stimulate the economy. But the aim has been to foster sustainable inflation after a year of fending off deflation or falling prices. They're not learning anything from what we've been going through in America, it seems like. Um, all kinds of investments from bonds to bitcoins have tumbled this year as high inflation forces central banks to to try to slow inflation that has flared an economic recovery. The war in Ukraine has added to those pressures. Powell said Wednesday the Fed is expecting to move expeditiously, expeditiously to get rates closer to normal levels after last week's stunning report that shows inflation, 8.6%, uh, that was unexpected. We were hoping that it would peak out at 8.3, 8.4 a few months back, but it didn't. Now we're hoping it peaked out and they're gonna stay with this aggressive cycle till we see that it has evidence that it's peaked out. Powell hinted that rate increase later this year may be smaller. That appeared to assure fears, but look at the market this morning. Um, and again, they tend to overshoot. They do tend to overshoot. The war in Ukraine has held prices for oil soaring because the region is a major oil producer. So again, the biggest factor, folks, the biggest factor, the biggest clues is this. Are we going to break down in the, in, the, in the biggest sector? Are we going to break down? We're supposed to be opening up at 137.50. 137.50 still puts us in this range. That's number one. Remember something. Consumer discretionary stocks have been lagging behind. So if we are starting to rally in that sector, um, right here, let me just go th through them. So if we start rallying in this sector, if this sector remains uh, bullish during this, that's a very, very bullish sign, very bullish sign. Also, keep your eye on the bond market and see if the bond market can um, recoup some of these downwards losses. Um, let's see what the futures are at right now. Let's see indices. Ooh, markets are still down about 500 points, but it looks like it's coming up. So again, 
I wouldn't worry too much before the opening bell. Let's see where we close. And if we're closing on the upper end of the range, again, that's a very bullish sign that markets are almost done. My theory is this, we're in the, we just started the second leg of this mild recession or recessionary pressure. And I think we're, we're near bottoming out because markets are always forward looking. And even if we're gonna be in this for the next six months, they're gonna start looking out past that in the very near term. So this is why I say we're near the bottom end of this instead of the high. The biggest clues today is watch consumer discretionary sector and whether it breaks the lows. Watch for volatility and whether it breaks uh, highs. If it doesn't break out the highs, we'll be okay. Keep your eye on the momentum levels. These momentum levels are bottoming out. And keep your eye on the Dow and whether we go back into this range. If we go back into this range, that will be very, 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 very positive and not negative. So those are the three factors we're looking at right now. Now, today is Thursday, and what do I always give you? On Thursday, I give you ETFs. And I'm gonna tell you guys uh, something right now. I am right now looking, I'm right now looking at a bounce in the consumer discretionary sector. I'm not kidding. And right now, right now, I was telling my guys yesterday, there are some stocks that I'm liking right now that are turning around. Um, some some footwear companies, but if you look further at the, at the cumulative strength index, and if we look at it on a strength wise, everything here is still defensive, 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 defensive. But but if we go a little further down, right? If we go a little further down, you're going to see some stocks like AutoZone, Ulta Beauty, right? Do a Dollar General. Um, Amgen, Electric Arts, which I'm not happy about right now, Dollar Tree. So there are some stocks that are starting to come up here that I'm liking right now. So I'm right now really, really liking on a cumulative basis, I'm really, 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 really liking the consumer discretionary sector. I'm starting to like it. And I gave you guys uh, yesterday some stocks that I'm really in love with right now that I think are gonna bounce back and are bottoming out. Those stocks are Crocs, right? Those stocks are, um, what was the other one? Uh, Deck, shoe stocks. Those are consumer discretionary stocks. So I know this sounds crazy, but right now I'm actually liking the consumer discretionary sector. And I think the consumer discretionary sector is actually gonna go higher and not lower. And it is dirt cheap right now, like dirt cheap. So I would right now, be looking at the December, December or the September. Yeah, you could probably do September. You could do the September calls. You could do the 143 calls or 144 calls. They're not that expensive. One way to do this is do a spread and buy the 142s, right? 142s or 143s and sell something like the 150s. Your net should be about five bucks. And implied volatility is lower than historic volatility right now. So you're not, you're not really overpaying too much in comparison to historic volatility. So I like, I think we're bouncing here. I think this is gonna be a bounce. And I think even if we go a little lower, I think most of the downside in this sector is priced in. Um, I'm not a big reversal guy, but we went from 215 all the way to 135. And I think we're, we're, um, we're almost done. And I do like some footwear stocks and they are consumer discretionary. Now, before I let you go, I've been working on a brand new way to trade stock market for the past six months. We just closed out our third winner in a row trading these strategies. When things started getting dicey in January, I set out to optimize 64 secret patterns that date back to the 18th century. You've heard me right. Desperate times, desperate measures. <laughs> I'm just messing around. With the idea of trading stocks without having to worry about the stock itself. That means no fundamental analysis, no technical indicators, and I just broke down, literally broke down the step-by-step -step instructions of what I see as a true trading breakthrough. I'm not kidding. If you see this, you're gonna love it. Even if you don't join just by watching this, it's gonna blow your mind away because I'm giving you so much research and value. Click on the link below and watch, catch this must-see replay, do it now. Folks are giving me the best, the best feedback ever. And folks, the best sector, consumer discretionary, the 142 versus the 150-ish strike price. Follow the link below. Tomorrow, weekly recap, biggest winners, biggest losers, and what to expect next week. Follow the link below and check out Pattern Trader. You do not want to miss out. 
I put so much research into this. It's ridiculous. Ridiculous. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.